you, Corey. I, I, yo, I was at the game all night. I come back. I see that. I've checked out. You know, I checked out weeks ago. I'm done. Fire. You can fire, fire Jock Vaughn. You're going to get fired anyways. Yo, you know what it it's is. troubling. Macau said a lot of stuff is not right. No, I know what he said. I know what he said. He's too nice to ask for a trade. He asked for a trade. He asked for a trade. Yo, I don't care. You see, I, I don't got an allegiance to losers. I, I really, I really don't. That's the thing people don't understand, bro. I don't got time. There's too many stresses in life to me to be a, a lead, a, a, to be siding with guys who are a bunch of losers. I ain't got time for that, John, bro. Life is too crazy. Life is too crazy, bro. Exactly why I'm no longer a Cowboys fan. I, I don't have I a, I don't have a strange allegiance to losers. Like I'm good off of that. that and that's a different type of yeah. strange allegiance, by the way. Because you just keep on losing, you keep coming back. You're crack fiend. Welcome it's back crazy. to another episode of the Bench Mob. E-N-T podcast. It's true. We are back. The big three is here tonight. Fourth man is out on uh, what they call it. What Kawhi be on? <laughs> Yo, what? Lord oh, management. Man. About load, load management. Here we go. <laughs> the fourth member is out on load management. And oh. He don't watch uh film, he don't do film study, so I can say that he's not gonna go back and watch it, so we good. Um, <laughs> fellas, how y'all doing tonight? Doing good. I'm good, bro. I'm ready to get into it, dog. Hey, before we get started, y'all know the house rules. Hit the subscribe button, share, like, rate, and review us. We're not trying to be here for a good time. We're trying to be here for a long time. We just had the Super Bowl pass. We already talked about it. We picked the, all three of us on here. Picked for the Chiefs to win. Oh, Chris is the only one who picked the, the Niners? Yeah, he picked the Niners. Wow. All right, that's why I the said video, come on, man, in the comments. Yeah, the video you commented on, he picked the, he picked the 49ers to win. Wow. How so, foolish. the Chiefs now. Start off with this. Will they be that first team to three people? Uh, it's possible. I mean, when you look at it, as long as they got Patrick Mahomes and you got Travis Kelsey, I mean, there's a lot of moving parts. They might lose Chris Jones. They might lose some cornerbacks on defense, too, so that they've got stuff to figure out in the offseason. But the main pieces are Mahomes, Kelsey, you've got Pacheco, and you got Rice now. So you've got some talent on offense, and that's all you need. And you still got Andy Reid. He's coming back, too. So I think as long as you have that kind of nucleus of – Kelsey, Mahomes, and Andy Reid, I wouldn't put it past them to be the favorites again. Although, it, see, the season has its ups and downs. People were doubting if they were even going to win a game in the playoffs. And here they are repeating. So I don't know how you, you go against Mahomes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah man <laughs> that's funny you <laughs> yeah i watched on the playback it was a little technical difficulties it was uh some stuff going on in the background yeah yeah um but yeah so uh i i a lot i agree with a lot of things miles said it's hard to repeat i think if you know i think the only person that can get in this way in the afc if i'm being honest uh, is Joe Burrow. I think if, if they're not going to win, it's going to be because Joe Burrow got in the way and beat him again. I think he's the most formidable opponent he's got. And he's done it before. He's gone to Arrowhead and gotten him up out of there and gone to a Super Bowl. So it's going to be him if it's if they're going to lose. That's just my personal opinion. Um, I don't think the wheels fall off next year and they're just a bad football team. I think they'll be good. Uh, and I think they'll have an opportunity to, to have, make a good run um, at a Super Bowl again. You know, I think they have a good nucleus in place. Got young players. McDuffie's an a all-pro corner. They got him. They'll, keep, they'll probably keep Chris Jones. And they'll, at, at the expense of losing some other guys, maybe Legereus need to walk. But um, they'll, they'll figure it out. They're, they're too good of a team. They got the one constant in place, which is Mahomes. So they've got a, they got a great chance to do it. Probably a better chance than anybody in NFL history has had um, to three-peat. And I'm, I'm not going to bet against that guy, yo. I'm just not going to do it. Like, I, I think it's just bad practice. You're betting against that dude, like you're betting against the the goat, like the the neck, the guy who we're gonna eventually be calling the goat. Um, you know what I mean? So it, it's it's not even <clears throat> close. I've never seen a better player ever 
than than Pat Mahomes in football. I've never seen a better player. I mean, you can sit there and we could talk about Tom Brady, how great he was. And he was great. He was no doubt about it. But your eyes don't lie to you. You, you see a guy throwing left hand passes. You see a guy scrambling. And in early in his career, you guys remember, he was just playing backyard football, making guys miss, you know, throwing the ball down the field off schedule. And now and now he can do it both ways. Now he can hurt you sitting in the pocket, making the smart play every time. This whole playoff run, that's what he did. But he could also destroy you by just extending the play and then making that throw last second. And so he he's he's so special and, and he can still throw the ball a mile right through the air, which is something that Tom Brady couldn't do. Um, and he certainly wasn't an off script genius the way this guy is. And now you're adding the IQ and the reading defense. And he was able to read defenses, but the ability to just sit back and take what the defense gives him every time and understand what's going to be open based on what coverage he's playing against. So I, I, look, if they get him a wide receiver, a, a dude, you know, they go get him another guy, which they're probably going to go try to go do. Um, we're, the league's in trouble. The league's in trouble. I think they're going to have enough in place to go make and run. But I think if they do lose, it's not going to be because of anybody other than Joe Burrow. It won't be an NFC team because there's no NFC team that's really eminently going to challenge them. It's, it's not Brock Purdy. It's not Jared Goff. Those guys don't scare you. It's not that it show as that game, uh, Dak Prescott. You know, ain't nobody scared of him. Uh, he looks in the mirror and he gets scared. So I, I think it's just going to be it's going to be Joe Burrow. And that'll be the reason that if they don't make it, it'll be because he outdueled them because he's the guy. He's the guy who's can step up to him and, and make that and make it a, a you know challenge. But I still think I, I got Mahomes. Mahomes is the better player. On the flip side, 49ers lose to the Chiefs again. They had in 2020 10 point lead and loss. Just, what was it, yesterday, two days ago, uh, Kyle Shanahan fired Steve Wilkes. So they are now going to have their fourth defensive coordinator in five seasons. This year they were eighth in yards, third in points per game. And some would say the only reason why they were in the game in the Super Bowl was because of the defense. Mm. Was this the right move and big picture can Kyle Shanahan actually win the big game? I I don't think it was. I don't, I don't think it was. I mean, I, I don't blame the defense for, um, you know, this guy Shanahan deciding to go go away from the run game out of nowhere in the middle of the game. It was working. They were getting yard. They were getting five, six yards in the temp. I know it probably doesn't come out to that. If you look at the averages, I understand that the average might say something different. But the when I watched the game. McCaffrey was 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 killing him, especially early in the game before he had that fumble. And then even after his run attempts, they got a bunch of yards um, after that. So I I would be, you know, it was surprising to see that they let him go. But, I mean, they, they needed a scapegoat. I don't think that anyone's job was really in danger there. I don't think that Shanahan was in danger of losing his job. So firing your defensive coordinator just feels a bit reactionary to me and a bit like panic. You're panicking. Like, I don't understand why. But And, and I know you've lost the big game three times now. Three times now, um, three different ten point leads, which is tough. But the reason why you're not getting over the hump is because you're trying to throw the football and you want to win the game that way and get away from the run game. But <laughs> you know you have Brock Purdy, and 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 Brock Purdy played a good game. He was it's not the re- he's not the reason they lost, but he missed throws down the stretch of that game. That you know, like a great quarterback hits and he's not a great quarterback and he did it. He did a good enough job this season. He's a good player and everything, but that's just the reality of it. So it's hard to go up against Mahomes and miss easy throws, miss easy opportunities at, at critical stretches in the game. And then you're going to go away from what's working on top of it. Those things compounded. It wasn't defense. Defense wasn't the problem. Defense, they did a great job. I thought they actually gave him home to fit and fits most of the game. He actually got going late. And if it weren't for that, the, the punt that went over the guy over the guy's foot, and they got that uh, recovery, they wouldn't even, they couldn't get good field position. They couldn't even get on the other side of the field and get in the red zone. So up until that point. So I mean, it, it's reactionary. It's it's sad, but, you know, I guess Shanahan's trying to CYA, co- cover his ass, cover your ass. All right. It's all right. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I was confused why they fired him too. Um, I feel like this job as the DC for the 49ers has been like a, a stepping stone to like a head coaching gig. Like we saw Sala got it. Then D'Amico Ryan stepped in and he got a head coaching job. And I felt like Wilkes didn't do a bad job. I mean, you can look back at the Lions game and they gave up 24 points in the first 
half and and think, okay, maybe there were signs of some lapses in the defense. And then, but in the Super Bowl, they they played a great game plan. They had a great game plan going. And I think the game might even be different if Drake Greenlaw doesn't get hurt. So for them to a few days after the the Super Bowl to fire the DC, it doesn't make sense. It's it's almost like someone's head had to roll and it's not going to be Kyle Shanahan because he's the head of the snake. So um, I think he feels like that's the most replaceable position on his coaching staff since he's probably the one calling plays and, and doing stuff like that. So, um, but you can't even really blame the DC. I feel like the offense didn't really step up the way they should. Like they have weapons. They got Debo, McCaffrey, Kittle, uh, Ayuk, um, and yeah, Purdy was missing some throws, but a lot of that was because Spags had a, a great game plan of timing the the rushes and making him feel uncomfortable at times. When they got away from the run and they were passing, like even that last drive in overtime, those last two pressures basically won the Chiefs the game. Um, so yeah, I think it was a combination of things, but uh, the scapegoat had to be. Wilkes, I guess. Yeah, man, it's going to be a busy offseason this year. Of course, for those, you know, we're going to have our draft episode. We're going to talk about the picks. We're going to talk free agency, all that when it happens. But now, right now at this point, it is basketball season. We can direct all of our efforts. The basketball. We get nationally televised games. We get the Sunday after church games on ABC are back now because Love football you. is over, which means more than likely you might be only seeing three members on the street <laughs> often. This is crazy, bro. <laughs> but don't be alarmed. We are still <laughs> we are still a team. It's just like oh. I, and back in the day, it was times you just didn't, you never knew when Kawhi was going to be out. We go through the same thing here at Bench Mob. Looking at the season so far at the midway point, hasn't been taught. It's just now starting to get some national conversation. We talked about it, hinted at it a little bit. The Cleveland Cavaliers, mm. 36 and 17, <clears throat> currently the number two seed in the East. They had 12 games over the last month where they held teams to 102 points or less. The lowest average is 108 points per game. So they've been playing lockup. Evan Mobley is shooting two threes a game now. He's yeah. shooting it, and he's shooting it at a high clip, 54% from the three, which is stretching the floor apart. Jerry Allen, defensive player of the year candidate. And, of course, Donovan Mitchell, Darius Garland, Karis LeVert, that's probably the best three-headed guard combo in the league, arguably. Donovan Mitchell, where does he rank for y'all on the MVP ladder, and how serious do you take these Cavs? Because the Cavs played pretty good last year, and then they met Miles' Knicks, and they bullied him. Mm -hmm. How serious are we taking the Cavs, and how high up is Donovan Mitchell in the MVP conversation? I have been I've been screaming to the mountaintops about him, about Donovan Mitchell's MVP case for a while. And for me, Donovan Mitchell deserves to be top two in that conversation. I think he's I think he's jumped over Shea or he's right there. Or, or And I certainly think he's up there with Jokic in that conversation. He's top three at the at a minimum. And I think you can make a case he's top two, depending on how you have it you know, ordered. But. I think he should win MVP. I think he's had a stronger case than, than even Jokic does, in my opinion. I think you got to look at the Darius Garland injury and the Mobley injury, and then in that stretch of games to go 18 and 2 or something ridiculous like that, with him just playing out of his mind, just playing out of his mind night after night against great opponents, against the bad opponents, just beating who he's supposed to beat, and then beating got teams that people didn't think they would beat. It was a combination of both kind of wins. He's his playmaking has gotten so much better. He's his reading his reads of the pick and roll are so much better than they were even a year ago. And he, he's just continued to ascend and get better and better. And it's a it's a shame um, that as good as they are, it's a shame that no one traded for him at the deadline to you know strengthen their odds of winning a championship. 
because he is on another level right now. And he's the kind of guy, he's, he's the kind of skill set that can fit on any team, right? But to answer the question and stay on topic, I could rave about Dalvin Mitchell all day. I think he he legitimately has, in my opinion, he's the front runner for MVP. I know people will look at it like it's crazy, but I don't see how you could if you're paying attention to what's going on in Cleveland, which, by the way, the reason why most of y'all going to disagree with what I'm saying is because y'all don't pay attention to what's going on in Cleveland. And I don't blame you. It's Cleveland. I understand. But, you know, he's out there playing great basketball, yo. I mean, he is he is leading the charge over there. They were without Darius Garland for so long, months. And he and it was like they didn't miss a beat. They didn't miss a beat. And they're not that good. Like, they're not that good of a team. It's it's him. If you took him off that roster, it's, it's not the same level of production um at all and, and do it you're not getting the same level amount of wins so it, it's got he's got to be mvp he's the definition of it this year and if they finish the year strong i do think he'll win it i do think he has a really strong case to win mvp this year which is insane and then we'll see how it affects his next contract and, if, and how it affects the trade negotiations because we all know he's not staying there and so we'll see how it affects that stuff but um yeah, I think long story short, I, I definitely respect his MVP case, and I think he's the number one guy, in my opinion, right now. I'll let Miles take it about who, if he takes the cap seriously. Because, I, I mean, I want to know who is going to trade for him at the deadline. Well, I don't think anyone, I, I don't think the Cavs, the Cavs said no, because he's playing so well. They just said, you know what? We know he's going to leave, but we'd rather him walk away for us, from us for nothing. Or we just trade him in the last year of his deal, then let him walk now when he is playing this well. It was just hard to trade a guy who was playing at MVP level. You know what I mean? It's hard to just give that up. You're not going to get that in return, obviously. You know, so you're just blowing it up at that point. But yeah, I mean, no one could have. No one could have, to be fair. Uh, I wish, I just wish it happened. That's all I'm saying. And, and as far as the Cavs being a serious contender, I think the problems they had last year are still there. It's the same roster. I don't, I mean, Max Truce is a great signing, and I think it, he helps them a lot but he doesn't help them with interior toughness. So a team like the Knicks could still give them a really tough time because they're just bigger and stronger with the Hartenstein playing at the level he's playing at and then Robinson's going to come back, right? He's, he's supposed to come back. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think that they match up well with them, but they could give a team like, they could, they could give Milwaukee a little tough time, you know, with, with Damian Lillard shooting tour dates because you think about his situation at the crib. You know, you, it, it's a lot that, that could happen there. So, or the Pacers, uh, it can get it can give them a hard time, but I don't I don't take them at seriously as in like championship contenders. I don't see that going there for them. I just don't see it. But the East is open, especially with the Embiid injury. The East is more wide open, so we should take we should take them. We should respect them. I just don't think they're gonna win the whole thing. I, I like the Knicks far more than I like them as a team. Yeah, I mean I'm in the same boat. Like I respect what he's doing. I think yeah, he should be in the MVP conversation. Um, still think Jokic is gonna end up getting it at the end of the day. So, um, but like, as far as the playoffs go, I, I just don't know. I don't think this team is as they're, they're overachieving right now. Like they're on a hot streak. They're on a heater um, playing out of their mind. Like you said, they're winning games in spite of some injuries and that's cool and all that stuff. But I think in a playoff series, um, yeah, like against the Knicks or something like that teams, that can lock in onto Donovan Mitchell and you're gonna have to see other guys step up. Like I don't I don't know if Mobley's at that stage of his career where he's ready to take on a, a bigger role. And DG's still working his way back. So we'll see if he's playing better by the time the playoffs come. But uh, I don't I don't really see them as one of the top favorites in the East. I mean I know they're the, the two seed right now, but they're probably like maybe top five as far as like being feared to make a, a championship run. Like, I just don't see it with this team. We shall see. I mean, the Cavs, like you said, it might be they just overplaying right now because I don't trust them when it comes to the playoff time. I still, it's Knicks. And Celtics. So based off the matchups, they might be able to get through, but actually winning a championship, no. Actually making it to the finals, probably not. If they see the Knicks or the Celtics, is the Cinderella story ends right there. And I think also though, I think Donovan Mitchell is staying. I think really? Donovan Mitchell is staying. The only reason why I say that, and y'all tell me what y'all think about this though, the Lakers 
with the reports from now saying that they're going off to Trey Young in the offseason. I mm-hmm. think they know Donovan Mitchell is staying, which is why they're going after Trey. Uh, you're assume, are you assuming that they that if if they if they could have their choice, they'd go after Donovan Mitchell because they think he's staying and they're going after Trey Young. That's what you're saying. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's, a good, it's good logic. I just feel like, why the hell would he stay in Cleveland? It's just bad for business. <laughs> why would you stay? Like, I don't think, I don't think, I don't believe, I'm, I'm going to believe that when I see it, yo. Yo, yeah. he's staying in Cleveland. That's insane, yo. I, I think, come on, bro. Like, yo, those shoes he, he made don't even sell already. And then you're going to be in Cleveland. Like, you, and the worst part about it is he started in Utah, now he's in, Cle- now he's in Cleveland. So when are you going to get a chance to go play in a big market where people can actually see you and like appreciate how great you are? He's having, he's doing all this on um, playing amazing, playing the best basketball of his life. He's probably the best player in the world right now, or top two, top three, what one of the best, just on the streak, anyways. And no one talks about it. They don't even talk about it on the jump. On that, you know, they don't even talk about it there. Kendrick Perkins, the Shanae, they ain't even talking about it on that show. Think about it. Like he's no one talks about this, and he's playing. He knows he's playing the best basketball of his life. You got to think when he's sitting there at home and he's contemplating what he's going to do next. I think he, all those things are going to come into come into his mind. Like, you know, why would I stay here? I go anywhere else. They're going to pay attention to me. Anywhere else they pay attention to what I'm doing. Imagine if he did it in, with the Knicks. Oh, I mean, my God, it'd be a, it would be the stereo. But if he does leave, it has to be the Knicks. I don't think he's coming to the Lakers. I I don't see it. And from what I was reading too, like. The Lakers, their mindset is having Trey, a Trey and Anthony Davis two-headed monster for post LeBron. You don't sound excited about that. I don't know. You, I know you're not. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think in the short term that could win you, win you a championship though with LeBron there. You know, which is oh, probably worth his weight. With LeBron there, yes. But once LeBron leaves, it's uh, it gonna get a little it gonna get a little weird. And, and I, I, get, I get what you're saying. Although the pick and roll would be nasty. But I understand what you're saying, and I understand that Trey Young is off the court. Trey Young, if you're, if you're trying to trade Trey Young, it's because of who he is in the locker room. It's not because of his game, obviously. And also, he didn't play defense. He don't even try. So I understand. I understand the knocks about him, but uh, him playing with LeBron in, in AD, I mean, that would be a, that would be something special. Um, the floor spacing would be wild, and if you didn't have to give up Reeves, which you're going to have to, understandably so. But you know, with some some good pieces around you, and I think they'll have enough after the trade. It could be a really, really good team, at least for two years while LeBron's, you know, in the twilight. And LeBron gets a little break. You know, you get a guy who can go get 50 with with you. You know, it, it's a good situation in, for in the intermediate future, but obviously long term, we know how that looks. Um, but as far as Mitchell goes, man, you got to get up out of there. And I feel like Miami's going to be in a suitor for him. I do think Brooklyn's going to go after him, him hard just because everything that Marcus has said, I just believe they are. I know it's crappy over there, but I, I the rumor is guys gonna play with Macau. We'll see what happens. We'll see if Macau is even still there. Who knows? Um, if he survives all this nonsense, if he wants to stay, but they'll go, they'll be a suitors too. So Brooklyn and Miami are two other options for him. And we'll see what happens. We'll see. But yeah, I'll tell you this: either way, either place, no matter where you go, and I'd rather go to Miami, just being real, but either no matter where you go, your spider three is gonna sell a little bit more. They're gonna talk about you a little more, and they're gonna be nicer colorways of your sneakers. You know what I'm saying? You could probably re- revamp them, right? But you do that in Cleveland, and you ain't selling no shoes. You're probably going to be single because who the hell are you going to meet in Cleveland? You know, it's it's a bad situation <laughs> living in Cleveland. They ain't nothing good about it. So he really should consider getting the heck, getting out of there. Come on, Tony. You wouldn't want to stay there. If you was him, you getting out of Cleveland. You ain't doing that to yourself. I don't, all the millions in the world ain't making you happy in Cleveland. No, none of it. None of it, yo. No. I'm saying it's either Cleveland or Knicks. I don't see it happening to the Lakers. I, I can't. The Knicks are probably the strongest suitor, I'd say. I, I mean, they are. I said, I'm mentioning three teams. You just mentioned the other teams. Miami, Brooklyn, I think are all better options and all more likelier options if we were doing betting odds of where he's going. Yeah. That's where he's going before that. And I don't know, man. If we got to give a lemon daddy for – Trey Young, I might – you might keep Trey Young in Atlanta. <laughs> Yo. Seeing from Reeves the last 10, 15 games, the Lakers don't – Lakers look like they kind of figure something out. Not Darvin Ham. The Lakers are the team. <laughs> Not Darvin Ham. Hey – I don't. I don't know if the Delo the Delo play is full goal, fool's gold or not. He did this last year around this time of year. He played great, and then the playoffs came, 
And then it just there was a rap. I mean, it wasn't even in the the Lake the Warriors series or the Grizzlies series. It was in that Denver series where they just really put clamps on him. I think when they played Denver Denver the other night, he didn't play well, or he didn't even play. He didn't even play. Excuse me, he didn't play. Uh, it was the day the night of the trade deadline. He didn't play. So I mean, that's the series that's going to tell you everything you need to know. You got to get past them because they ain't they ain't going out before they play you unless unless the Clippers get them up out of there. You know. But if we're, if we're being real, if we're being real, I don't believe in the Clippers. I don't believe in them. I don't care. Sue me. I, I don't believe in the Clippers. And I, I have every reason to believe in them. But it's just the guys on the team. It's Paul George. It's Kawhi. Kawhi it's it's Russell Westbrook, who's doing a great job. He's admirable. It's, it's been great. It's been great. I mean, I mean it. It's been admirable. But uh, <laughs> he's okay. yo, he's been doing great. And then who else? A Harden. Harden. You know, they're doing a good job. I'm just oh. – it's admirable. It's a. I just admirable. It's admirable. Well, he's so bum. Like, all right, it's admirable. You're trying out here. <laughs> he's giving. He's giving him his best. He's giving him his best. He gets I, even, effort. I didn't even mean. I didn't even make it. Mean it like you mean that. Like he's Rudy or something. Y'all are funny, bro. I didn't hey, mean it like that. Perfect. Perfect. You mentioned the Clippers, so we're oh, gonna end boy. off the show with our cap and facts segment, of course. But we're gonna end it off with a midway. Report card. We're going we, we going great. Some of these teams and some of these players at the midway point. No, we are not doing every single team. We are not doing every single player. We Thank are not God. doing that. Um, we are not at that level yet where we can have a four hour podcast. So that's not pay me. Ex- and literally, once money comes in, we could do a six hour episode. Cool, great, yeah, man. But right now. We're not going to do that that long. We're not going to do every single player. So I chose a couple of teams, couple of players. First team, thirty five and twenty bucks. At this point, what grade would you give them? Maybe like a C plus. B minus. Oh, I like them a C minus. You nice as you're nice. I'm like, I thought about C C minus, yo. C C plus. I give them C minus. I mean, because yeah. in spite of all the stuff going bad for them, they still are what third in the East. So yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a circus, and Doc Rivers is not a good coach, but um, they're still third in the East, so I kind of got to, you know, give them a little respect. C plus. Mm. You're 33 and 22 Knicks. By the way, before we give the grade, just so you know, your Knicks are on for since y'all started that podcast with Jalen Brunson and Josh Hart, by the way. Well, see, there's no context behind that because then we've got like <laughs> seven people on injured reserve right now, just sitting. Um, uh huh. But I'll give them an A minus. I think yeah, they've made a lot of good moves trade wise, and um, they've built like a strong, deep team. But the depth is being tested right now with all these injuries. So um, we need this All Star break badly. Um, we need Randall back, OG. But yeah, this this season is going great. I mean, they deserve an A. They deserve an A. There's no way around it. They they haven't. There's nothing they've done wrong outside of not trading Julius Randle already. Uh, they've done a great job. I I feel a lot better about it if they tra- yo if they trade Julius Randle, I might get on the train, man. I'm serious, bro. I ain't got nothing to lose. But yeah, I get rid of him. I can't root for that guy. I can't stand Julius Randle, yo. I can't stand Julius Randle. The, 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 the early game against the Bucks on the road where Dylan Brunson was cooking and he and uh, Randle quit on the play because, he, you know, he, I guess he wasn't playing well or whatever, you know, and Jalen Brun- Brunson took a shot. I guess he didn't approve of the shot, even though he's cooking. What you, what, what are you talking about? And Randle was awful. I, I just can't get that out of my mind. I can't get his look on his face out of my mind. I can't get the way he walked back on defense out of my mind. And he's done it a couple times this year amidst them playing great right so they're winning and he's still worried about himself he's still worried about oh i'm got, i'm not getting my points all oh, this ain't that he's still in his bipolar i'm sensitive to that stuff you know don't cancel me but now i'm <laughs> he's still on that so um but i can't, a, I can't, I can't a perennial, perennial all-star now you see here you go he's the worst perennial all-star of all time <laughs> that's know. what i'm saying yeah. he might be the worst perennial all-star of all time I've seen a lot of Knicks fans because things are going well. Trying that's, to that's how Knicks fans are, man. 
trying to defend it, but I'm like, y'all forgetting very quickly. He's not a good teammate. I'm sorry. I don't care what Josh Hart, Jalen Brunson, I don't what care what say? Enzo says. I don't expect – I can't see Jalen Brunson coming out in that interview anyway talking about why wow, he's still on the team. Yo, Julius Randle, he sucks as a teammate. None mm. of them are going to say it, but we can see the body language. When his teammates are doing well and if he's having a bad game, it, it'd, be, it'd be really telling. Oh, DiVincenzo with another three, but he missed him. He missed Randall on the layup. Mm-hmm. Yo, it's, what is – It's nasty word. What does Shannon Sharp always say? He says – Never accept anything in a win that you wouldn't in a loss. And that's what Knicks fans will ride the wave. It, it's going well. But then and the stuff he doesn't do, the stuff that Randall that makes him can make him cancerous to your team, it, it's going to rear his head in the playoffs. That's the problem. He, he, it, it, he or his play just decreases in the playoffs. He's just I'm, – I'm really, really not – Hot on that guy. I get that he, you know, trading an all star doesn't make a lot of sense on paper, but if you can find a good enough deal, I would certainly entertain it. Um, I really, really would. I, but I know it, it's just got to be there. So he's in a team. It makes sense. They're not doing nothing wrong. The GM's putting, been putting on a master class. Bogdanovich, Burks, you got him for nothing. You, you traded basically the the equipment manager, and you got those two guys to come back. That's a great trade. So you 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 can't you can't fault Rose and those guys. They're doing their thing. Um, I understand, but I just I'm not a fan of Randall. And I think if they're gonna win a championship and become a serious like championship contender year after year, he can't be on the team. He can't he can't be there. He can't. He can't. I, I mean it, he can't. I, I you can't do that. I know this turned into a Knicks podcast out of nowhere. I'm just saying that you can't you can't do that. That's just my opinion. The 30 and 25 heat, what what grade do they get? A D. A D, yeah, like a... <laughs> He gave him a D off the rip. What do you, what, do you, what is the record? Thirty and twenty-five. I mean, it could be worse. It is the Lakers' record, yo. Could be worse. They're the seventh seed right now in the East. Isn't Jimmy Butler on sabbatical or something? Yeah, he had a. Death oh, wait, no, something. Oh my God, he someone died. Yeah, someone died. Yeah, that's right. That is a very worthy cause of being out. Yo, he do that sometimes. He just disappeared. You know, no, Jimmy. My bad, Jimmy. Sorry. I thought, no. I thought he was writing a country album or something. He has had those moments throughout the year. This most recent one is because of a death in the family. Yeah, that's right. No, very, very fair. It's just like when he was there, he, he, you know, he take every other night off. So you just don't really know what he's out for. But I did read that. So, yes, I'm sensitive to that. See, that's terrible. I'm, I'm praying to him and his family, man. That's terrible. That's terrible. Emo Jimmy. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I think I'd give him like a I, – it's been a rough year. I probably at thirty and twenty five game with D is a bit harsh, I guess, but I mean I, I get where Miles coming from. It's lifeless over there. It just feels like they it's lifeless until it's not. The playoffs happen and then all of a sudden they are everyone's worst nightmare. So we'll see. It's the same team though, outside of Rozier. So you know, I don't know if the Rozier thing makes a big difference in a playoff series or not. I'm not sure. But um I, I think that they're going to be a problem in the playoffs when that, should that time come, when that time comes and they'll be healthy and the, they'll draw like a Milwaukee or you know a Cleveland in round one. God, Cleveland really doesn't want to draw them in round one. My God, um, oh, my, that'd be bad for them, Cleveland. But yeah, I think I think they deserve like a C. I think a C is probably fair. Just just lifeless, but they don't care about the regular season. You know how they you know how they are. Hey, man, I'm not sold on the Terry Rosier thing. It's like it's like when you go to a restaurant, you're like, yo, can I get bacon, egg, and cheese? We don't have any bacon. And then you ask, can I get a sausage, egg, and cheese? We don't have no sausage. So then you settle for Taylor Hand. They didn't want Terry Rosier going into this. <laughs> who they wanted at the trade deadline. You're right, though. They struck out in the summer. They didn't get another star. They don't have help for Jimmy outside of Tyler Hero. Bam's been playing good, but Bam's not gonna go get thirty and fifteen. It's they just wait until the playoffs. That's how Miami is rocking. Twenty one yeah. and three Brooklyn Nets. Huh. That's an F. F. Yeah. F. F. And it's it's an F for a lot of reasons. Um, and this this is why we can't do the entire league because I'm gonna go on a rant about every team. This is why we can't. But they, McCall Bridges has not been good, and 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 when he has been good this year, it's been when he's off the ball 
and he's playing off one of the guy. When Ben Simmons came back and he's playing off Ben Simmons, he looked great. Coincidentally, when they've, whenever they've had a good point guard playing with him and he can play off ball and catch and slash and shoot and catch and shoot, he's just so much better off the catch, so much more efficient. He's not good on ball. He just he's just not where he is with his game right now. He can't dictate the game with the ball in his hands, read pick and rolls. That's not his game right now. So that's okay. That's okay. Um, it, it's just he's not – he, he's not the guy. He is, he is a secondary, not even a secondary, I think a third guy, but he could be secondary in the right situation, I guess, if you have the right guy next to him because um, his defense is good. Huh? You said who? Shea? Uh, Shea no, Shea. I was going to say who. Like the tone has changed since the beginning, since the summer. No, I mean, he, play, he, he played great last year, but I, I think, too, these guys got filmed. They started forcing them left. You know, they're sitting on – He's sitting on certain tendencies, and that's part of it, and that's why. And then on top of it, his finishing on the rim, around the rim is not great. It's not great, and that's the problem. He doesn't have a lot of finishes around the rim. He doesn't have a variety of finishes he has to really – he's not creative around the rim, and that's the reason why he's struggling at the rim. It's just it's just tough to watch. So if we're being honest about it, that's that's the difference. I thought this summer he'd take a leap with his finishing around the rim. That's what I thought he'd work on. That that clearly was not the, the uh, focus of the summer. I don't know what was, chasing around – these WNBA girls or whatever, I don't know what he's on, but it's been tough. It's been tough to watch. He's so. just, you know, he's Cam Johnson with a voice. That's it. <laughs> hey, yo, Greg said he was too busy trying to get with Asia Wilson. That's wild. Yeah. And that's what he was on, yo. I seen the tweets and all that. That's what he was on all summer. Walking around with Donovan Mitchell all summer. I'm thinking he's going to be on a Brooklyn Nets. Season starts in here. So now we just look stupid. Now we just look stupid, you know? But it's okay. I mean... If the Nets can hold, hold, it's not about this year. If the Nets can hang on, they're going to give Houston a top 10, top top five pick, and it sucks. But this is probably the draft you want to do that. This is probably the draft you want to give them a top five pick because it's not a great draft pick, you know, draft class. Um, so that's okay. But you 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 go through this year, and then you assess in the summer. You, ha- you have to make a move of some kind. You got to fire – you got to fire uh, Jock Vaughn at the very least. And then you try to see who's out there, and you canvas the league and see who's available for a trade, what what great player, what good player, what what elite player is available if there is one. But I think I think the Nets are going to be quiet this summer. I think what's going to happen is 2025, they're going to get aggressive. That's just my hunch on what's going to happen. So it sucks. But I, I thank God, you know, LeBron still plays, so I can I can stay locked in on that. And uh, the Knicks are in town, and they ain't bad, so it's not it's not a bad time, you know. I at least I can watch them, you know. I got MSG, I got cable, I'm good. <laughs> Thirty at twenty five, magic. Uh, maybe like a B. No, I get an A for me. I ain't see it coming. I mean, you kind of saw like the workings of what could be. Like you, you got Franz, who's a really good player in this league. Um, Paolo's taking another step. Um, and then you've got Anthony Black, who's starting to play a lot better as the season's going on. And you've got the bevy of guards of like Suggs and Cole Anthony. So they've got some solid pieces on this team. Like, But they're not a threat. They're just, you know, it's a good story. So It's like the Suns when they won all those games in the bubble. They're like sort of similar to that team. Where they got promise, but they they're missing something. Yeah, it's that guard, that uh, log jam with the guards. They still commenting on that on YouTube on Miles' head, like still to this day. Still, <laughs> <laughs> Magic Mafia is nothing to play with. Um, Magic Mafia is nothing to play with, and 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 I think um, you know with that with that team they've overaccomplished. Hey. <laughs> they've overaccomplished though. Uh, you know, angles I hear humping dudes or whatever. That's interesting. Maybe I'll drop their grade for that to like a to a B. But I feel like it's an A just based on the fact that they're magics. They've been perennial losers all my life. Outside of that Dwight Howard run with Stan Van Gundy. Um, so they, they they deserve some credit for where they've where they've come and that hopefully that leads to them being able to keep a guy like Paolo in town for them, you know, down around down the line. They're getting good at the right time, is all I'm saying. Um, but they're going to have to continue to draft well because you're not getting stars to go to Orlando, which is weird because I feel like it's not bad to live in Orlando. But, you know, there's also – you. So you, you just mentioned the Dwight era. Shaq just got his number retired. Do you think Dwight number in Orlando yeah. will be the next one? Yeah, he should. Yeah, he yes. should. If, if, yeah, like Miles said. Because if, if Shaq got it, then why wouldn't Dwight get his? I don't, I don't, I don't see what Shaq's I mean, like – 
impact was how is he greater? Would yeah. he be like their like second or third best player in history, like behind like Shaq and McGrady? Honestly, I mean, he might even be over McGrady. Honestly, he probably is over McGrady though. If you're being honest about it, yeah, he's, what, he's gonna get his jersey required there, retired there. Oh, oh, who owns that team? Was it is it, is it there is it the Republican guy? And isn't isn't uh isn't Dwight known for uh relations with <laughs> Ain't it the Republican dude? It's it's the Dan Devos? But yeah, and he he's the one who uh but he's the one who came out, he gave the big donation to the uh, uh, Republican the Republican Party or whatever. Something oh, yeah. crazy. People were like upset about that. People yeah. were upset about it. And now Dwight, you know, Dwight, of course, is, you know, he's he, he's swinging the other way. You know, he's hanging out with dudes. He, you know, he's gripping, the, you know, he, he's over here debowing dudes, gri- gripping guys. He, you know where I'm going with it. So Dwight around the tip. Dwight, I'm like, like it's jail outside. So, so I, I don't know. I don't know if that guy's going to retire his jersey, actually, now I think about it, because that kind of behavior doesn't align with the values of, of, a, of a man like that. But what he did for the organization. If you want, if you want to be serious, then yes, be serious. I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm saying, too, like what he did for the organization was way before we knew anything about any zesty behavior. So yeah. <laughs> he might be able to overlook it and be like, what you did when you were with us was kosher. That's what they should do. Once you went they to LA, do. that's what changed everything up, you know. Mm-hmm. People change up when you go to Hollywood, so that might be what it was. Yeah, it's not a coincidence that they, you know, Isaac was on that team, and Isaac didn't want to kneel for the BLM situation. Remember all that during the anthem when they were in the bubble? And he said the only, you know, that was, you know what his logic was, which I, yeah, I was, yeah. Right, he up for him, you know, he over here blocking Wimby and whatnot, so it might have worked out. He could, it probably, you know what? That's true. That's true. What's his brand? Anti woke or something? <laughs> Got pissing me off, yo. Yo, the Phoenix Suns are thirty three and twenty two. What's their grade? Uh, maybe like a B, maybe B or C. Just because I feel like expectations were a lot higher for them. Um, mm-hmm. Seeing as how they traded for Bradley Beal, and this is supposed to be another big three, so. Um, and health has been an issue for this team. Like KD's missed games, Bradley Beal's missed basically 60% of the season. And D Book, D Book has been out for some games too. So uh, the consistency hasn't been there, but I th- I feel like they've been playing a little better of late. So I'll give them a B. Um, I thought they'd be closer to like the top five than wherever they are right now. Maybe they're in like sixth or seventh. Which is not good. That's not good enough for this team. And if you're not able to make any moves, then KD's always, you know, he's got his eye on everybody in the league. So it's called KD a hoe. Um, uh, and he is. But uh, yeah, I mean, they're not winning a championship. Can we just be honest about it? Not winning a championship. I know we're not doing you know overall outlook. I'm I'm I gotta stop ranting because I'm got I gotta stop. But it they're not winning a championship. There's no chance of it. I'm sorry. They don't have the makeup of a team that wins a championship. My God. And I think with her with with, with <laughs> she's trying to talk to me in the middle of the podcast, bro. With with um I thought you were talking about the singer. With her. <laughs> She's saying something to me as I'm talking, but um, you know, with the with the makeup of that team, just long term, I I'm skeptical because of Bradley Beal's health. So to to sustain and to be respectably good, you get a B. But it, there were times where it didn't look like it was gonna be great, and I also don't think Frank Vogel was the coach for that team. I think don't be surprised if he gets fired this off season or even next off season because I just you know. There are certain out of bounds timeout plays. You just kind of watch them. They look, they look all like they're all over the place. So I don't think he's gonna last over there. But you know what? There's never been a coach good enough for for uh, KD, unless of course he played on the greatest team of all time. Never. Just saying. And never been players good enough unless he played, of course, on the greatest team of all time. So it says a lot about Kevin Durant. He want to go front run somewhere. I don't know where, 
but it should be interesting. Sidebar, if I go to the next team, a couple players, Klay Thompson might have just needed to be benched. He has 35 right now, 7 of 12 from 3. So Clay actually is looking like himself, and Draymond is getting buckets with 25 points. So it's wild, crazy. The Dallas Mavericks, 32 and 23. What's their grade? I'd say B. Um, I feel like this is just about where I, I expected them to be. They're still like middle of the pack of the Western Conference. Um, like Kyrie, as great as he is, he's not like moving the needle enough for a team like the Mavericks to get to that upper echelon where, I mean, you'd expect to be when you have somebody like Luca. which I feel like at, at the end of the day, in a few years, he's going to ask out of there and it's going to be one of those things. Like, I know Mark Cuban wants to try to keep him there for life, like uh, Dirk, but he's going to get tired of not winning and they're not going to win anything in Dallas while he's there. So um, I think teams are starting to like review and do paperwork and see like, all right, what would we have to give up to get Luca in maybe a year or two? I could see the Knicks even looking at that, like waiting on him to ask out to being like, all right, this is the guy, this is the guy that we're going after. So um, the Mavericks, they're having a good season. I mean, you can't scoff at 33 and 22, but for Luca to be able to stay and, you know, you want him to be a Maverick for life, you need a little more. So you think the trades that they did at the trade deadline is actually going to make an impact the PJ Washington's and uh, the, what's his name? Gafford. Gafford. I mean, Gafford, that was a really good trade that they made. I think he adds another element to that team. Like, pick and roll action and defensively it, it makes them a little better because um, you can't roll with a rookie uh, moving forward. I mean, he's going to be good, but I feel like Gafford gives you a little more experience. And then PJ Walker, you can spread the floor a little bit more around Luca. Like he adds a, a four that can shoot threes and, you know, a secondary score right next to him that, um, you know, Maxi Kleber is not really, as good as PJ Walker, in my opinion. So it, once they get up to speed, I feel like that that PJ Walker trade is going to uh, Walker PJ Washington trade is going to be even look even better. What well, grade you give them, Greg? Oh, probably uh, I'd say a B two. I'd probably say a B. Um, they, they've been all right. Maybe even a C plus. You didn't, they, they played all right. I think they you know they survived the situation with Kyrie almost breaking his leg because Dwight oh, Powell fell on him or whatever. Um, so they've been okay, but you know they're another team that's just they're not winning a championship and they're really in a bad situation because the Kyrie and Luca marriage is not a good one for obvious reasons. I don't have to get into. So yeah, I I, I don't. It's really because of Kyrie, by the way, um, but also Luca's uh, can be problematic. Um, but yeah, you know, I I think I'd give them a B and a B plus, and because they've they've treaded water, I think a B is probably more acceptable than a B plus, honestly. So I'd say B. I talked myself out of it on live on on air. All right, we're gonna transition into the players. Brandon Miller, he's killing it. Miles on miles on mute. My bad. Um, uh, it started off bad, but. I think as you know, they've had a lot of injuries and LaMelo and um, he's had a chance to play on ball a little more and, you know, play his game. I think you're starting to see what everybody saw before the draft and why now, you know, buyer's remorse, I don't think they have any about taking him over Scotty, uh, Scoot, Scotty. Might as well change it to Scotty. I don't know who Scoot is. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'd give him like an – a, I'll give him an A. Looking at him, especially the last like 10, 15 games with LaMelo being in and out the lineup, uh, this might be controversial, but Charlotte Hornets is Brandon Miller's team. It's Brandon Miller's team. And you're seeing the shades of 
what is the ceiling for Brandon Miller, which could be Paul George, you're seeing that. And he's consistent. He's there. He shows up. He's playing both sides of the both mm-hmm. sides of the ball, unlike LaMelo. Mm-hmm. I think going forward, the team belongs to Brandon Miller. That's his team. LaMelo will have to get in line. I think you're right. Uh, because I think that Brandon Miller is showing that he's a winner, trying to get back, hustle back, you know, trying to – he's speaking a language that those guys haven't even heard before, you know, and that's winning. They talk about winning habits, like getting back on defense, um, you know, just closing out, you know, just extra rotation. He, he's there. He, he's he's really done a great job. He, he deserves a net. He is literally killing it right now. He's killing it. Hey, man, I'm going to go to the next player, but listening to J.J. Reddick podcast, he said he talked to people in the organization, and they mentioned when you talk about Brandon Miller, they say smart, high IQ, Mm -hmm. detail-oriented. As a rookie, detail-oriented. We ain't never seen that viral clip of LaMelo yelling at the team to get back on defense. No. It's Brandon Miller. LaMelo just like, oh, they scored? Come on, get the ball back in real quick. So I could go do tween, tween, step back, logo three, sideways. No. no. <laughs> this is Brandon Miller's team, man. Next player. <clears throat> Kevin Durant. 28 points per game, six rebounds, five assists. He's shooting 53, 44, 90. You know... You know, with him, it almost doesn't matter. But the stat line reads because you know he's going to do this. He's just that great. You're grading him on a curve. Um, and the turnover issues are still there for me. And I, I don't, I, I do think that he's quietly on a decline. And we can see it maybe more so with, you know, any of these stars that have come up maybe, outside of maybe Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade's decline was just crazy. Um, but any of these great players that we've seen in the last, you know, decade or so. I'm going to give him a B minus, which is crazy. <laughs> Those stat lines, they're going to they don't kill me. Um, but, I, I, you know, again, if you watch him play, when, when defenses crowd him, when defenses do a good job playing in the gap, rotating, um, this is the part that the, they won't see, by the way. When defenses play him the right way, you know, he really does struggle with, and crowd him, he really does struggle with turnovers and protecting the ball. Um, it's it's a consistent issue he's had, and and I and I'm telling you in the playoffs when they play a good defensive team, Denver, and you know it maybe is only Denver. L A LA could probably present that problem for him too. Um, I think L A's defense is good. The Lakers, by the way, not the Clippers. Uh, but I think that you're going to see that issue start to rot. Just show his uh, rear his ugly head again with him, and I just I just don't trust him, in in big games, <laughs> which is crazy to say about Kevin Durant, but it's true. I've seen enough tape. Look at and if you don't believe me, go watch, go back and watch the the sweep against the Celtics as a net. That last year was it? The last year he was there, the last year he was there. That no one talks about. That no one talks about. By the way, um, but yeah, uh, I, I'm I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with a B minus for him for those for all those reasons. To your point, he is leading the team in turnovers. Oh, oh, surprise, surprise. But but I don't know what I'm talking about though. You know, and the people like Noah just like to disagree with me for the fact just because just because I say stuff is all right. And y'all don't know, y'all don't know anything. If y'all knew something, y'all be on the podcast. Y'all don't know shit. <laughs> Miles, what grade are you giving KD at this point in the season? I mean, I'll give him a B. I feel like the numbers, it's kind of what you'd expect from him. But at the same time, with those numbers, I feel like they should be a lot better. And I don't want to put it all on him, but this kind of seems to be a trend where it's like, I don't want to say empty stats, but um, he's not affecting winning in the same way as like LeBron does or uh, Jokic does. He's like, I don't want to say he's stat padding because that's not something that's usually put on his name, but um, yeah. If you were doing a blind test and you're saying, all right, put these numbers out there and guess what uh, the team's doing, you would think the team's doing a lot better than just like middle of the pack. So 
I'm, I'm giving him a B. All right, we got two more players before we close out with Cap of Facts. Jamal Murray. C. I, I ain't even, you know, it, this is what I'm talking about with Cleveland. He could be having the greatest season ever, and I love basketball. But the mainstream media won't even know it because he plays in Denver. And they have the greatest player in the league. Joe, I'm not saying that's sarcastic. He, um, he's yeah, he put the quotes up there. like uh, yeah, Something about him bothers me, but he's a great player. Great player. All of him. And we don't talk about Denver. We don't talk about Denver at all. Um, so I, I just think he's been off. I think if he's playing the Lakers, he, he gets an A. Because, my God, he, he likes to kill them. But <laughs> – um, you know, against everybody else, it's just been, it's been okay. He's been all right. Or it's been a roller coaster all year. I give him a C. You know, he isn't, he ain't, he ain't all that. But against the Lakers, it seems to be, which is just really annoying. Yeah, what grade would you give him, Miles? Because I've been saying it, watching it. It's games that they should have won if he showed up. Nicola's still doing his thing. Nicola's an MVP conversation. It's literally, again, the same conversation with Denver. Will Jamal Murray actually be Robin instead of Alfred? Mm. I mean, that's the thing, though. I feel like you say it, say, say it about his whole career is that, like, it's been so up and down. Like, he'll have stretches, like, in the bubble where he looks like, all right, this could be an all-star. And he'll have stretches where it's like, all right, this guy, he's just, you know, your run-of-the-mill point guard in the league. So you never know which Jamal you're going to get. Mm -hmm. um, so I give him a, a C. I mean, he also gets hurt. I think he missed some time early in the season. He's missed a full season because of the ACL. Um, so health is always something that's in the back of your mind with him and uh, wondering if he's going to make it through. But, yeah, when you think of Denver, you don't really think of Jamal Murray. Like, you're afraid of, like, if he's clicking and hot that night, then that team is dangerous. But – like if he's missed like four or five in a row and, you know, you can kind of clamp down on Jokic, which that's hard to do, you have a good chance of beating Denver, I feel like. So definitely a C. For context, it was, what was it, two nights ago where the Bucks beat them by like 20-something points? At, yeah. home, uh, uh, at home. At home. The Doc River Bucks was able to do that. Mm. Last player, yeah, it was 112 to 95. And to give context, Jokic did his thing again, 29 and 12. Jamal Murray, 18 minutes, three points. One of five, one of three from three point. Two turnovers. <laughs> That's the That's stat. Crazy. Now this player, <sighs> I said a lot before he got drafted. I was not a believer. He was very one dimensional. And we're seeing that this year. You put players that have winning backgrounds around him, a Fred Van Vliet, a Jeff Green, and he has not lived up to what they thought they were getting. And he was in the conversation for being traded at the trade that line, which says a lot for how high he was drafted and how early in his career he still is. Jalen Green, what grade does Mr. Green? <laughs> Jalen. D, a D. I feel like he should be a lot further along in his career and he's become expendable. Like, I think, amen is a lot more untouchable than he is. Like, hmm. you, see, you see Amen, and I just see the traits. He can't shoot right now, but everything else he brings to the field, the field still in football, uh, brings to the court, that's what you want. He plays defense, he grabs rebounds, he makes plays. Jalen doesn't do any of that. Like, he's a scorer, and that's, like, his whole mentality. Um, and he's not doing that well this year. 18 points per game. 41% from the field and 30% from three point. Yeah. And that's the thing. He had a stretch maybe a couple weeks ago where, yeah, he was averaging maybe 
27 a game for like two weeks. And you're, you're thinking like, all right, maybe he can figure it out. But no, there's been too many times where there's stretches where he doesn't do any of that. So, um, yeah, I think maybe in the off season, because I don't think they're going to sign him to a max deal because that's when this off season coming up, you're going to get guys like Cade and Mobley and even Jalen Johnson probably from Atlanta signing extensions. Um, but if I'm Houston, you've got a good thing going right now. You've got – good young pieces. You've got Cam Whitmore, you've got Amen, you've got veterans like Dylan Brooks and Fred Van Vliet. Like Jalen kind of doesn't fit on this team anymore. And um, I'm sure he may gets frustrated with like some of his shot selection and what he does on the court. Um, but that's the thing. For a second overall pick, nobody's going to really bite for it. Jalen Green, unless you attach a bunch of picks to him. And even that, it's not going to get you that much. Because I think that's what they tried to do with Brooklyn. And he doesn't push the needle enough to get Bridges. Even though Bridges is having an okay year, I still value him more than Jalen Green and a bunch of picks. Brooklyn Brooklyn said we ain't down that bad. We don't want no Jalen. <laughs> well, Kyle, Kyle Bridges is still really, really viable in the NBA because of the contract he yes. off, he's and not just the contract what he does off the ball he's like he's still a very good he's an elite basketball player it's just he's not a one he's out of he's just playing out of position so he's still got incredible value to a team and you know what Ime Udoka is a, is a winner he's trying to bring winners in there guys who have winning habits guys who play defense guys who understand what it takes to win and Macau does he just it's just the, the cards aren't stacked in his favor right now. He's got a bad coach it's 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 a bad situation hate to hate the crap on the black guy it's just a bad situation but Jalen Green is a loser. He is a loser. That is the bottom line. He is a loser. And, and, and I mean it in every facet of the word. He, 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 as a basketball player, he doesn't, he was never coached. He was never coached. He doesn't understand how to play defense. He doesn't understand where to be defensively. He doesn't understand defensive rotations. He doesn't understand how to make the right reads. He's just trying to go out there and score. He's playing like it's a high school game. And the problem is, you see, under under last dude's Silas, it was okay because Silas was running a little AAU program. It's a grassroots program over there in Houston. So it's fine for them for him to go do, do whatever he wants. And I mean it. They didn't run plays, bro. I saw them play three times in person. They don't run plays. And so they, at least they didn't with him. And now Ime comes in. Ime's trying to win games. And Ime's like, yo, like, you don't, I'm realizing you, you're just a loser. Like, you don't know how to win because no one ever taught you. And the problem is you're now, how old is he? 22, 21, whatever he is. It's too late. Yeah. It's too late. I can't, te- I can't unteach you bad habits because you've never been coached. You were always the most talented player in high school, in grade school, AAU, G League at night. You just coasted on talent and it was fine. They called you unicorn early and all this stuff. Okay, and and the problem is, you did you never knew how to play basketball. You never actually understood how to a simple give and go. You're not unselfish. You know you care who scores the point. It's it's got it's got to be it's got to be you. He's a selfish guy. He's selfish. He, he doesn't help on defense. He doesn't talk on defense. You know what I'm saying? He's just good. To, he's just good for shooting the ball. That's it. That's it. So, you know, with him in a championship coach like Ime Udoka being in the building, of course he wants him out of there. Problem is. Email, everybody sees what you see. Everybody sees what you see. You see, they see he's a loser too. So ain't nobody want to coach him. For what? Where am I sending him to? We, what are we gonna get in return? You're not getting nothing in return for him. You know that. You know that. So it's really sad and it's indicative of where basketball is right now. Different rant, but it's really indicative because that's exactly what it is. These kids coast on talent. They're never they've never been more talented, but they don't play basketball the right way. And this is the problem with the bucket getter mentality. Guys get buckets early in their career. Guys get buckets in high school and college. You, you're fooled and you're bamboozled. I think this guy's gonna be the next star. He can't miss, but he he don't he don't know how to box out though. He don't know how to pump fake though. He don't know how to pass fake though. He doesn't know how to throw an entry pass. So he's really not a good basketball player unless he's shooting the basketball. And even then, because he doesn't know how to do the little things, he's never really gonna be an efficient basketball player because he also don't know how to play off the catch. He can't play off the catch. He can't just catch and shoot. He can't catch, rip, and make a move. To a quick, one, efficient, one dribble pull up. He ain't got none of that stuff to his game. It's got to be, oh, I'm gonna dance with the ball, dance with the ball. I'm gonna jump and hope something good happens. I might dunk on you, like you did. The other, you know what I mean? Like, makes me sick. Makes me sick. I sound like I'm, I sound older than I am, but this is what I'm talking about. 
Um, so yeah, he's a loser. F, loser, loser. Hey, you not old, cause I see it too now. Like I said, back training. Kids really don't know how to do the basic reverse pivot. Like yes. we spent 10, 15 minutes on trying to reverse pivot, right foot, left foot, do the correct pivot, yep. rip at the knees, yep. triple threat, have it on the hip. This is your shooting pocket. And mm -hmm. this was the advanced class. This was the sixth to eighth grade. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, the thing is, a guy like Jalen Green wasn't even doing that. And, and that's why I'm saying, like, you, you, they, they find these trainers who teach them all these complicated moves and all that stuff because he's gifted enough to pick it up. But he never learned the simple stuff because he coasted off of that ability for so long. And, and now you're in the NBA. And I'm telling you where it's headed with Jalen Green. He, he's got, yo, he's got the rest of his rookie contract and another year to figure it out before we, we, we label him and he's gone in a couple of years. I mean it because he can't be a role player. That's the problem. So he can't even age his way out of the league gracefully. He can't play off the catch. So he can't be an off ball guy. So if he's not the guy, then he'll never be an NBA player. He can't be in the NBA. That's where we're headed. Be careful. That's where we're headed with him. Okay, you saw the highlights of him working out with uh, Devin Booker and Kevin Durant in the offseason and all that stuff. They play well off the catch, though. Like, you don't. You don't. You are inefficient off the catch. You don't make shots off the catch. You don't make the good decisions off the catch. And you're really only in it for yourself. Let's just be honest. You know? You're in it for yourself. So and they, they do way more where they can be effective, even if they aren't scoring. But that's a whole nother, whole nother discussion. That's why Gilbert Arenas sound like a dumb, dummy for, for talking about, oh, yeah, I take him over Jalen Brunson. What did he say? Did he say something like that? He said something stupid. He said something like that, like, I'll take him over Jalen and he alluded to, he said, Jalen Brunson, basically, he was like, no matter how good of the season he's having, he's not really a star. I want to put him in the category as a star. And he was talking more so the off-the-court stuff. But I'm like, if you look at the game and what Jalen Brunson is doing this year, you're talking nonsense. And that's where he mentioned Jalen Green. That's a star. I would have Jalen Green on my team before I would have Jalen Brunson. But this is, this is why... This is, this is Gilbert Arenas was a loser too. He was a loser. Yeah, you see, because he could score and all that, but that that's that's there's so much other stuff to basketball than that. He he was also a loser. I, I'm just being honest. He was he was a flashy loser. He scored a lot. You know what I'm saying? But he was a loser. He, he didn't win anything in his career. All he wanted to do was go out there and score and look good doing it. Right? Let's just be real. Um so this is the problem with the bucket getter mentality. It's why I followed that account, Ball Don't Stop. I unfollowed them. I can't stand that guy. I can't, that guy from T Toronto, wherever he's from. You, I can't stand him because he's feeding these kids that mentality of like, yo, if you're, not, if you're not a bucket, you're not a pure hooper. What the hell is a pure hooper? Shut, like, shut up. <laughs> like, just stop with this pure hooper nonsense. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, like he loves guys like, uh, like he loves a Jalen Green, I'm sure. He loved... Uh, and I don't even get on IT because IT IT is a winner in my opinion. I don't I don't slander IT, but he loved that he he loves those guys like like a Jalen Green. You know what I'm saying? Like the guys that are looking to score all the time, you know. And and that's just not the way to play the game, man. It's not the way to play the game. Um, Gil, every time that part annoys me, because every time Gil mentions somebody, somebody a player, he started off talking about they only average four points a game. Yes. <laughs> That's the like, main thing. He yes. always, was like, even with the what well, it's a SAR is the one in Detroit, right? Mm -hmm. He 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 was he he really took a dump on them. Like he said, he said I would not have a SAR on my team at all. He you're crazy. He couldn't be the face of my team. Have you seen that guy play defense? Both of them? Yo, they be putting these grown men in boxes. It's crazy. Their defense is they are phenomenal. They're gonna be great NBA players for a long time. They're gonna get paid. They're gonna be really good, and they're gonna, yo, for them, you start making some threes, forget about it. For, you know, you talking about like teams are gonna be trying to trade four first rounders for them, for them, because their defensive ability is insane. I mean, his defense. Who it, I watched an Amen play against the Knicks the other day. Yo, his defense is something serious. I mean, he gave them fits. He was blowing up defensive possessions by himself, bro. Like as a guard. Or, or forward, whatever. Well, he needs to start. He needs to start over uh, Jalen Green. 
I don't know what they're doing. I don't know. You know what it is? They're trying to they're trying to showcase him because they want to trade him. It's business. It's not about winning because it's in the NBA. It's a business. So they're trying to showcase Jalen so they can trade him, and then they're gonna then they're gonna start Amen. It's not because they don't want to start him because Amen wants to start him. Yeah, you watch the Rockets game. He may be finding minutes for for Amen. Of course, Amen. he yeah. all tries to find minutes for him, and it He's, was yeah. great. Uh, Fred Van Vliet was out. He was getting him major minutes. Okay, yeah. we gonna put Amen in big time. Closing off the show, Capital Facts. We got two. The Dolphins will extend Tua. They are projected to be $56 million over the cap. Cap or facts, the Dolphins will extend Tua this offseason. Facts, they have no they have no choice. They have no choice. They have no choice. What are you gonna do? They don't fall off trees. You want to look at Daniel Jones? Go ahead. I'll say uh, right now, you can take him right now. What other choice do you have? Facts. That's easy. They have no choice. They have they have to they have to bend over and get shafted. They have to. <laughs> They have no choice. This is what they have to do. Yeah, last one. Cap of facts. Marvin Harrison Jr. is the perfect fit for the Cardinals at five. If he makes it there. I mean, mm. yeah. I don't know if he'll even make it there. But y- Yes. I mean, like, yes, he's the perfect fit. He is. Cap facts. But he's not falling at five, though. Yeah, I can see so? the Bears. I can see the Bears taking him. I mean, one, they have top two, top five picks, right? Yeah, but they're like at one and eight, so I don't think he makes it there either way. They they're gonna take Caleb one and one. You know they're gonna do that. Yeah, yeah. So. First, obviously, Bears. You got the Commanders, Patriots, Cardinals at four. My bad. And then Chargers at five. The Bears are the number ninth pick. They got the two in the top ten. Yeah, they ain't getting yeah. more. Than. It'd be a perfect fit. Um, so if, if, if Marvin Harrison gets picked up before that, what do you think the Cardinals go towards? Still wide receiver? Trade out. Where are they at for? Yeah. They're going to trade out. They're going to trade out. Um, they might go They might go neighbors if neighbors blows them out the water. Because when, when is the combine? R- regardless. It, it's probably soon. June. June I think. Or it's March. The combine? Uh, it's got to be in like a month or the yeah, next Yeah, March. He's talking about the NBA. Something like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, – they could go neighbors if neighbors is there. They could go. He could justify a fourth overall pick. That's fine. But I think it's more likely they trade out, trade out, build and build and build. They, they they're 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 that kind of team that that could trade out. Um, so we'll see, we'll see, man. But yeah, he'd be a good fit, a great fit. All right, you already know the vibes. If you stay ready, you don't gotta get ready. Bench mob, y'all. Peace. <laughs>